it's Melissa. I am sad and excited. There's a lot of stuff that's retiring that is amazing and it's sad, but I'm excited because there's a lot of really fun stuff that's being put in place of the things that are retiring. So today I thought I would jump on and we would actually make a card. So my brother and his girlfriend are having a baby and I am actually going to be making their baby card right now. So this is the card that I just whipped together. <laughs> you know, no big deal, <laughs> just whipped it together. Um, took me about an hour probably just to play around and make sure that it was the way that I wanted it to be. I did the smooshing technique on the background, which I just learned this last weekend in my creators blog hop we did a technique hop so if you haven't checked that out yet be sure that you hop on over to my blog mcreations.com so i'm really excited to get started and show you guys how i made this card and we will get right to it so this is the card we're going to put together using the petal palette stamp set i just cased this card from pinterest but i did do a lot of alterations to it so the main gist was a sentiment here and then the roses in the corners and then an oval and had a little bit of ribbon on it so I did follow quite a bit of it but I did change quite a bit as well so we're going to put that together right now thick whisper white cardstock so we're gonna do some chopping up on that guy the layering circles framelits dies these will still be current in the new annual catalog. So I'm using the largest circle. So I'm going to set that aside. We'll do all of our cutting out in a little bit. So I'm going to cut my paper first. So let's set that over there. I'm going to grab my stamp and trimmer. And I like the card to open this way, long way. So I'm going to trim this down so that it is four and a quarter wide and then we're going to score it in the middle at five and a half so there's our card base and now I'm going to cut a piece for the mat on the front and that measures three and three quarters by five so I'm going to cut this piece at five on the long edge and then I'm going to turn it and rotate here and cut it at th three and three quarters. Okay, so there is the mat for the front of our card. And this piece here is what we're left over with to do the stamping for our roses, our sentiment, and to cut out that circle in the background. I think everything should fit on here if I am very, very careful. <laughs> Let's see. And if not, I have an extra piece of that thick whisper white that I can use. So we should be good to go on that. I am going to use my Stamparatus, which is still current and will be current in the new catalog. So no worries there. I'm going to move that plate over there. All right, so I already have mounted up the rose stamp, and I know that my stamp goes in this corner here so I want to line my paper up with my grid paper in this corner to get the most use out of the space so I'm gonna put my magnets down now for the roses you, you do want to ink those up with your stays on ink all right so we've got that there. And if you wanted to ink it up again and re-stamp, if, if it's a little too light in areas for you, you can totally do that with the Stamparatus because it'll stamp in the exact same place as long as you don't move your cardstock. But I'm actually just fine with how that came out. So I'm gonna flip it around so that I can stamp in this corner because I want two. So there's my two roses. I'm going to take this plate off I'm going to bring this plate in. I have my sentiment here. Now the whole sentiment says, some things are just meant to be like the two of you together. 
but I want to take some of that off. I don't want to use all of that. So I'm actually going to use a sticky note. And this is really the first technique of the video. I'm gonna use a sticky note to mask the part of the stamp that I don't actually want to stamp. First of all, I'm gonna clean it off on my stamp and scrub. And I actually just got one of the new Stampin' Chamois, I think is what they're called. Um, I have not used it yet. I guess I could get it out and see how it works. But for now, I'm going to go to my good old trusty stamp and scrub. Okay, make sure that's nice and super clean. Now, I do have it on a block already. I could stamp it with that if I wanted to, but I really like using my Stamparatus. So we're going to go that route instead. Okay, so I have that. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cover up. Can you see that? Yeah. I'm gonna cover up the part of the stamp that I don't want to stamp down, get right up in its business, and then I'm going to ink up the top portion of that stamp. Take that sticky note off, and just to be safe, I'm gonna put a fresh sticky note on, just to make sure it really doesn't stamp where I don't want it to, oops. Maybe not, maybe I'll, you can also use washi tape. That works a lot better. Let's see if I can get this to stick where I want it to stick. There we go, good enough. Okay, and then just stamp that down and boom. Perfect sentiment, just the portion of it that I want, not all of it, love it. All right, so there are those. So I can take this off. I'm done with my Stamparatus, so I'm gonna set that aside. But while we're still getting inky with it, I'm going to grab my gray granite, a D-size acrylic block. You can use any size acrylic block, really, but this is a good size for what I want to do. I'm also going to grab my balmy blue ink. I have two sponges here. These are cut apart. I had a whole wheel. This is a quarter of one, and this is an eighth of one. So balmy blue here and gray granite there. And I have my aqua painter, so I'm gonna use that. And I also have two ribbons. Now, this ribbon here is the polka dot tool ribbon in Whisper White. It is not retiring, it will still be available in the new catalog. This ribbon here is the classic weave ribbon in Whisper White, and this is retiring. It will be available until the catalog ends on, I wanna say June 3rd is when the, the current catalog ends, or until supplies run out. So just FYI, we're going to actually, actually color these. So we're going to color, I'm gonna switch it up from this card. I'm actually gonna color the classic weave with the balmy blue and the polka dot with the gray granite. I think I'm gonna like that outcome a lot better. Okay, so I have this here, which I'm going to watercolor my flowers. And I have this piece here, which I'm actually going to be using to do the smoosh technique for this background right here. So I'm gonna do my background first so that has a little bit of time to dry. So with my D-size acrylic block, I'm gonna open my classic Stampin' Pad. And I'm just gonna stamp half, approximately, it's a little bit more than half, about half of that with the blue. And then I'm actually gonna just wipe a little bit away because that's a little bit more than I wanted. And you don't have to worry about the streaks, we're gonna take care of that. The other half, I'm gonna stamp my gray granite ink down. Okay, just like that. And you don't have to worry about the lines, you don't have to worry about any of that because we're going to take our aqua painter and we're actually going to start in the blue and swipe it back and forth. Okay, and then I'm going to grab some scratch paper. What did I do with, oh, here it is. <laughs> we're gonna grab some scratch paper and I'm just going to rub that ink off of the aqua painter until it runs clear. And do the same with the other side, just kind of smoosh it back and forth. And if your pen is too dry, make sure you get a little bit more water in there. There we go, that's better. Okay, 
So I got all of that gray granite. Now what I'm gonna do is go in the middle from light to dark and kind of blend it together. Run it off, dark to light, just kind of blend that middle section together. Push that ink where you want it to go. All right, so now with that all nice and wet and inky, I, I'm doing this on a hard surface with thick Whisper White cardstock. You might want to put a foam mat underneath. Just play around with the texture and see what you like better. And I'm actually going to go in the middle. Well, not necessarily the middle, but I want room around each side because I'm going to be cutting it out with my circle framelit. So, stamp it down, pick it up. And the more water you add, the more kind of watercolory and blended it'll be. So again, just play around with that whole thing. You can get a lot of really cool textures and backgrounds with this smooshing technique. I'm gonna set this aside until I'm ready to cut everything out. So let's get into watercoloring this. I have my Balmy Blue Stampin' Pad, and what you can, there's a couple things you can do. You can either squish it while it's closed to get a little pool of ink in the top here, or you can just pick a little bit up on that block, and that works just as well. So I have some on the block, I'm gonna pick up that lovely color. Now, because this is not watercolor paper, you wanna be really careful. You don't go over the same area more than once with this aqua painter because your paper will pill and it will not look very good. So I really just like the look where it's not all the way colored in, very just abstract and kinda outside the lines, not being super careful. So just make sure that if you're not using watercolor paper, you don't pill your paper too much by going over it or adding too much liquid. All right, so now I'm taking that gray granite. I'm gonna pick up a little bit on that block as well. And you can actually do this first and then smoosh these colors together. That's what I did on this background here. That way you're not really wasting any ink. Okay, so I'm going to cut my ribbon so that it's just a little bit longer than the card. And I'm making sure that my angles are going the same, kind of the, the opposite direction, I guess. So this one is slanted this way, this one is slanted that way, so I guess it's the same direction. I'm gonna trim this up because, actually I'm gonna wait to trim it. I'll trim it up in a minute. So I have that piece. I'm gonna grab this piece as well. For this card, I'm going to put the Balmy Blue on the Classic Weave. So I have my sponge, I have my Balmy Blue ink, and literally you're just going to drag that ink over your ribbon. Now you can drag it in the middle, depending on the ribbon type, just be careful. When, once you get to the end, you really wanna pounce it because depending on the ribbon, again, it, will, it can fray a lot. So I'm just gonna really focus on pouncing on the ends of this guy so that it doesn't fray too much. And the reason why I, I'm waiting to trim it is so that if it does fray a little bit, I can always trim that end off without it getting too short. Now, at this point, you may wanna wash your hands because they may be pretty inky. I have um, a water jug next to me that has some water on it, so I'm just gonna wipe my hands on that and just kinda rub, rub them on my pants. <laughs> Good to go, right? All right. So I'm gonna set these over here for a minute. Now we're ready to bring in our Big Shot and do a little bit of cutting. So we're gonna start by cutting out our background. So there's my background. Here is a large circle framelit. And it's okay that there's a little bit of space all around. You're really not gonna be able to see much of it once we get it on the card, because it'll be white on white. So you don't really have to worry about it. Alrighty, 
So there's our background. Look how fun that is. I love the smooshing technique. So awesome. And again, more water will be a little bit more watercolory and blended. Less water will be a little bit more grainy. And it also depends on what background you're stamping off. Excuse me. What background you're stamping on. Now we're going to get this and the label. These framelits coordinate with the Petal Palette stamp set, and they are also retiring. Sad day. These are the Petals and More Thinlets dies. So yes, they are retiring too, but it's all to make room for new beautiful things. All right. So there are my roses. Now for this guy, I don't want it as long as this label because that's pretty darn long and I really don't want it that long. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to scooch my, hopefully if I can get it to, all right, I gotta repolarize this, hold on a second. There's gonna be a loud bang or couple So when you're using your magnetic platform, I have found that if you do that, I'm just literally hitting it on the desk on its side, on all four sides, and I'm taking my framelit and I'm dropping it on its side on the desk. And I've heard that that kind of repolarizes the magnets. It usually works pretty well. See, that's working a lot better than, than it did. Okay, now I don't want the whole long label, so I'm just gonna put it where I want it, and then I'm gonna run it through twice. Once here, then I'm gonna move it and run it through again. That's basically another technique, you guys. So I think we're up to four. Hey, <laughs> technique island. Okay, I'm gonna put that back in and make sure that the label is seated on the top and the bottom, just meaning that it's flush and it's not moving around, <clears throat> so it's not crooked. And that's where I want it to go, so I'm just gonna run that through again, and voila, I have a shortened label. <clears throat> so get rid of that piece, and there it is. Very fun, okay. All right, that is it for the big shot work. Let me get this guy out of the way. So I'm gonna bring my pieces in. And the first thing I like to do is always layer first and then adhere second. So I make sure that I have good placement for all of my things. Everything's where I want it to go. I think actually I'm gonna put the blue on top of the gray. So we're gonna do like that little number. And then this guy's gonna go up in that corner. This one is gonna go down in that corner. And my sentiment is gonna float around somewhere right here. So I think I'm gonna bring my ribbon down a little bit more. Now, if you are crafting on your own and you are not using your phone to film, a good idea would be to take a picture of your project after you have placed it where you want it. So I have my general placement now. I could take a picture with my phone and then I could reference that picture when I'm putting it back together. But because I have my sample here, hopefully that was in frame. Because I have my sample here, I don't really need to do that because I can just follow along with that guy. So I'm gonna move everything off. Start by adhering that down. I'm gonna bring in my trusty old dimensionals for this job. So I'm gonna put three on the back of the circle. That's the part that takes the longest is taking the backing off of these guys. Pick that up. I like to have my blue on the top and the brown gray on the bottom. Just cause it's, you know, a little bit more like earth and sky. Okay, so I've got those down. Next up, I'm going to bring in some silver thread the silver metallic thread, which is also not retiring. The silver is not retiring. However, there are some colors that will be retiring. 
I can't remember if it's copper and gold. Um, I'm pretty sure either gold or copper are retiring. I I'm going to have to double check if you, if you have any questions or you need to know more, let me know and I can definitely find some answers for you. So I'm wrapping it around. I'm spreading my four fingers out. I'm wrapping around the silver thread three times around all of my fingers. And then I'm going to wrap it around twice, just around three of my fingers. Now, I'm gonna sandwich the thread between those two. That way, it stays in place. So now, I can carefully, I can f fix, fix this once I, oops, once I get it down. I'm going to place it so that it's mostly still all in the circle. Now, I'm going to get down my ribbon and to do that, again, I'm going to use a glue dot. So I'm gonna put, this glue dot is going to help me put this ribbon down. So I'm just gonna put another glue dot next to it so I can adhere my ribbon. And I do want it to be pretty close to the bottom of this circle. Okay, so there's one. I'm gonna do the same thing with my blue ribbon. And if you wanted to trim the ends, you can do it now or you can do it before you put it down. Next, I'm going to dimensional my roses. Now, I wanna make sure these really pop up. So I'm actually going to double up my dimensionals on the back. So I'm gonna start them in the corner. So this kind of has a curve to it. You've got this um, leaf on the edge here, like on the corner. So it kind of looks almost like an L shape, if you can kind of see that. So I'm, I'm really focusing, I'm putting my dimensionals in the corner because that's where those are gonna stick. And then I'm gonna put just a couple on the outer edges. And I really don't need too many. So there's two doubled up right here. Let's see, if this goes here, I'm gonna put it right here because I don't want it to stick on here because it will, it'll stick that down too much or it will stick on top of it and be too raised on half of it. So we're just gonna adhere that in the corner. Just those dimensionals are right up here and see how lovely that lays there. It's very nice. All right, now with this guy, he's gonna go down here. So I don't wanna put it there. I wanna put it in this corner here. We're almost there. So now I have these gorgeous frosted droplets. These come in a two pack, you get frosted and they're clear, but they look a little bit more shiny. But I really like the frosted look with this card. So I'm gonna pick one up and I'm just gonna set a large one and a small one in the background here. We're gonna take our card base and if your trimmer has dull blades, turn your cardstock over where on the side that you cut and you can just take your bone folder and run that down and good as new. Just like a freshly cut piece of paper on a good blade. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to crease that score line there. On the back of here, we're gonna bring in our dimensionals once again. One in each corner, two in the middle. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Get that in the middle. Very carefully. Carefully. There we go. Boom. You guys. Oh my goodness. Is that card not gorgeous? Oh, they're so pretty. I love it. Now, what would you do to add a little something something to these? I was going to use a little bit of shimmer by using my Wink of Stella clear, clear pen and do some of the roses. And I might still, I don't know, not sure. How gorgeous are those? 
Yes. So there we go. There is the Petal Palette Baby Shower Card, which I'm using it for a baby shower card, but you could absolutely use it for a number of occasions. It says some things are just meant to be. The one thing I didn't do is actually stamp congratulations on the inside. I did do that on the first one, so there's what it looks like. But I'm gonna leave this one alone so that if I wanted to use this for a wedding card, I could take the other half of this sentiment and put that on the inside. So the other half of that sentiment says, so this one says, some things are just meant to be. And the other half of the sentiment says, like the two of you together. So that would look really nice on the inside. It could be an anniversary card. It could be a wedding card. There's a lot of uses for that. Thank you so much for joining me today for this awesome video and this gorgeous petal palette card that is sadly retiring. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click that bell icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. You can follow me on the web at melissascreations.com. You can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mcreations. I'm also on social media. You can get me on Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest with the handle at mcreations. Thank you so much for joining me. I had a blast and I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.